The next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 13494 in the name of Jim Eady on the fifth anniversary of the Family Nurse Partnership Programme in NHS Lothian. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I would also invite those members who are leaving the chamber to do so quickly and quietly and indeed members of the public who are leaving the chamber to do so in the same way. I now call on Jim Eady. Mr Eady, you have seven minutes to open this debate, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. It is a real privilege for me to be able to bring this debate before the Chamber this afternoon, and I am most grateful to all of those members who have supported the motion in my name. This debate is an opportunity to recognise the innovative work which has been undertaken by family nurse partnerships across Scotland. However, I am particularly pleased, as an Edinburgh MSP, to be able to recognise the fact that Edinburgh has become the first city in the world to offer the Family Nurse Partnership Programme to all eligible women on a sustained basis. And what that means is that every first-time mum in our capital city, aged 19 or under, will now benefit from this programme. In total, more than 2,000 mothers have already benefited from the programme, more than 600 of them here in Lothian. The service first began as a pilot project in January 2010 and it has made a real and lasting impact, so much so that it is now being rolled out across the whole of Scotland. There are already teams in place across eight health board areas, Lothian, Tayside, Fife, Greater Glasgow and Clyde, Ayrshire and Arran, Forth Valley and Lanarkshire. And there are plans to extend coverage into Borders and Grampian later this year. I want to thank the Scottish Government for the political leadership which they have shown the Minister for Public Health, as well as the current and previous First Ministers. Sometimes it requires leadership to say to the sceptical voices within the civil service and the vested interests, this is the direction in which we are going to go and this is what needs to happen. I also want to thank NHS Lothian, and in particular their Director of Nursing, Melanie Johnson, for the clinical leadership and the commitment which she and the Health Board have shown to the pilot project which has now proved to be so successful. But most of all, I want to pay tribute to the nurses, the highly skilled and empathetic healthcare professionals and the young mums who have made the programme work. So what is the Family Nurse Partnership programme? Well, it is an intensive, preventative, one-to-one -one home visiting programme for young first-time mothers from early pregnancy until their child reaches the age of two. Mums are visited by a specially trained nurse every one or two weeks during pregnancy and throughout the first two years of their baby's life. It was first developed in the United States by Professor David Olds, Professor of Paediatrics at the University of Colorado, and is delivered in this country under licence. Its main aims are threefold, to improve pregnancy outcomes, to improve child health and development, and to promote the economic self-sufficiency of the family. The programme aims to introduce a new approach to nursing, working with the parent to help them build up their own skills and resources to parent their child well, but also to think about their own future and future aspirations. The programme is intended to offer targeted intervention in addition to Scotland's universal health visiting services. But it is important to put the Family Nurse Partnership programme into its wider strategic and policy context. It is part of a wider approach which recognises the importance of targeted interventions, particularly in the early years of life. There has been the development in the United States of the concept of the social womb, the environment which a baby experiences after birth. And Jai Ronald Lally, the co-director of the Centre for Child and Family Studies at West Ed in the USA, has stated, be it at home or in childcare, what happens during infancy is too eventful to leave to chance. This wider approach also requires paid parental leave so that parents can spend critical bonding time with their baby, the provision of high-quality affordable childcare, and it sits alongside and complements well-resourced universal provision of health visitors, which this government is committed to. But we should not lose sight of the unique and innovative contribution which family nurse partnerships can make. The Scottish Government's own data clearly shows that women aged under 20 in the most deprived areas, the target client group for the Family Nurse Partnership, are around 10 times more likely to have a child than those women of the same age in the least deprived areas. 
We also know that other issues impacting negatively on the well-being of mums and babies are also higher in areas of multiple deprivation. For example, nearly 31% of women in the most deprived areas self-report as smokers at the time of their first antenatal visit, compared to just 6% in the least deprived areas. And this is a stark reminder of why the approach embodied in the Family Nurse Partnership Programme is so necessary in targeting vulnerable mums and babies and offering them the intensive support which they need. When you take the time to examine the benefits from the programme, it becomes clear why the Scottish Government and Health Boards are right to make this investment. Nurses support mums to make positive choices in areas such as child development, preventative health measures, parenting skills, breastfeeding, better diet information, and offer practical support on education and employment opportunities. And all of this leads to improved pregnancy outcomes and improved child health and development. Presiding officer, I want to refer to an article which appeared in the Observer newspaper in March of this year. And it will not be possible for me to quote extensively from it, but I do want to refer to the fact that the journalist spent three months in Manchester and Portsmouth observing what the impact of family nurse partnerships had been uh, for the women um, and babies um, who participated in it. And she concluded that this was to witness how this extraordinary intervention achieves little short of miracles. And there's one personal story that stands out, and that is of a a young woman called Sarah, not her real name, whose father had hanged himself when she was nine. Her mother had died of an age-related disease when she was 13. She'd been in and out of care, had a badly scarred face from a dog bite, and her boyfriend, a user of drugs, was in prison. But her nurse said that as a result of the programme, and I quote, she had twin girls, she breastfed, she dumped the boyfriend, she had her scars fixed, so her self-esteem has risen. She is at college and has a part-time job and her own tenancy. Her two little girls are doing so well. We tell our girls again and again, you can be different if you choose to be. But as well as these anecdotal uh, personal testimonies, it's also important to observe that the programme is one that is underpinned and supported by extensive research. This includes the findings from the three US-based randomised controlled trials, drawing on the experience of the programme over 30 years. Here in Scotland, there have been four detailed evaluation reports which explored the experience of delivering family nurse partnership in the first Scottish test site in NHS Lothian. In addition, it will be important to understand in a UK context what added value family nurse partnerships deliver over and above universal service provision, where the NHS already offers midwifery and health visiting support. And the randomised controlled trial, the Building Blocks trial, uh, which is evaluating uh, the Family Nurse Partnership programme in England, will be instructive in this regard. There is growing evidence from the United States and from England of what the real benefits of this programme have been. Um, there is evidence from an evaluation carried out in England by the University of Nottingham of the benefits of early intervention for fathers involved in a home visitation service delivered by the Family Nurse Partnership. And quoting from that evaluation, it states the early nature of the help was crucial to its success because of how it so effectively tapped into the men's redefinition of themselves as caring fathers during pregnancy and following the birth. In conclusion, presiding officer, when it comes to family nurse partnerships, we should celebrate them, we should invest in them, we should continue to evaluate their impact and we should implement their rollout across the country. This is an investment like no other. It is one that is not only changing lives, but transforming the lives of young mums and babies for this and future generations. Giving vulnerable children in some of our most deprived communities the best start in life and the greatest chance to succeed as they grow and develop as adults. What better legacy for our society could there be than that? Many thanks. And I now call on Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by John Mason. Four uh, minutes officer, by, I please. congratulate uh, Jim Eady for bringing forward this debate and we'd also like to congratulate NHS uh, uh, Lothian for, I think, being the first... Um, um, I think Edinburgh being the first uh, city uh, in the world to offer this programme to all eligible mothers, in this case uh, uh, teenage uh, mothers. It started five years ago and in a sense was part of a, a wider movement towards uh, focusing on the early years 
and looking at investment in the early years as a part of the preventative spend agenda. The idea being that if you invest a lot of money in the early years, you're going to uh, avoid some of the problems that children growing up would face uh, in uh, later uh, life. Now, um, it's uh, based, as Jimmy D said, uh, on a program that's been well evidenced from America by randomised controlled trials. Uh, Professor Olds and the outcomes from America, we were told, were better pregnancy outcomes, improved child health and development outcomes, and uh, improved parental life course. Now, of course, it doesn't automatically mean that that would be the same in Scotland. For a start, we have an NHS in Scotland. Clearly, they don't have anything like that in America. So it's very important that we do separate evaluations uh, in Scotland. And I've read the latest evaluation from NHS Lothian, and I'll obviously draw on that now. But I, th I think uh, I'm very enthusiastic about the programme, uh, as is Jim Eady, but uh, others have been more sceptical. And I'm told, for example, that there was a PQ recently which suggested that breastfeeding rates for mothers on the programme was only 5%. So I don't think we should be so starry-eyed that we don't uh, focus on perhaps areas where uh, um, you know, the, the outcomes are not so uh, outstanding. But in general, I'm certainly very uh, positive uh, about uh, the programme. It, it, it appears to be a very tightly controlled and prescribed programme. Everyone's got to follow um, the procedures and protocols laid out by uh, the founders of the programme. But Reading the evaluation, I can see that, in a sense, part of the prescription is be flexible. There is flexibility to meet the needs, specific needs of individual uh, clients. Truly, training of the nurses is very important, and I was struck by the fact that young mothers are involved in selecting the nurses, and I was quite impressed by that. The key thing really seems to be the quality of the relationship between the nurse uh, and the mother, the consistency of that relationship over a significant uh, period uh, of time with regular uh, visits. Uh, it seems also that it's a non-judgmental uh, approach. Uh, the nurse can say, take this on board if you want to. Uh, and the fact there are very uh, small uh, attrition rates suggests that this is a programme that is certainly valued highly by the mothers who receive it. So the basic idea, obviously, is to give mothers the support that they need, help children get the best possible start in life, and I think prevent the problems that might otherwise arise. I don't think we should just look at it from a public expenditure point of view, because it's actually quite expensive uh, in the short run. But I think the belief is, and the evidence from America is, that actually it will save money down the line, because some of these children may not have the problems in later life that they would otherwise have had. So I think the whole programme is underpinned by attachment theory and a recognition of the strengths of the mothers, which is a, a part of the assets-based uh, approach that we sometimes hear about. So I think the evidence is there that this is a good programme. I think the Scottish Government has been doing some very um, worthwhile uh, and innovative work uh, in the early years. I think alongside the Family Nurse Partnership, we could look at the Early Years Collaborative, and they're sometimes set against each other as alternative ways of pursuing a preventative spend agenda. I would actually prefer to see them as complementary. I certainly don't see any uh, contradiction between them. So I certainly welcome what's happened uh, in my own city here, and I'm glad that it's extended throughout Scotland. But uh, Clearly, we have to keep evaluating it, and if there are weaknesses in the outcomes, then we have to try and address those. But I am certainly uh, very pleased to uh, welcome and, and, and commend all the work that has been done here in Edinburgh. I congratulate NHS Lothian. I uh, commend the Scottish Government for supporting the programme, and I thank Jim Eady for bringing forward this debate. Many thanks. I now call on John Mason to be followed by Jackson Carlaw. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and may I thank uh, Jim Eady for bringing forward uh, this important subject, which I think is highly important in its own right, uh, but also in many ways is symbolic of the whole area of preventive spend, which is what I would like to concentrate. Now, I do have to say that as a Glasgow MSP, I do not always support motions which start with the words that the Parliament congratulates Edinburgh. However, I will make an exception uh, today. There are obviously different angles to come at this subject from, be that health-focused or Edinburgh-focused. However, I would like to come at it from a finance angle, eh, not least because eh, the Finance Committee, of which I'm a member, has spent a considerable amount of time eh, thinking about preventative spending. And whenever we talk about that subject, one of the most common examples which is given is family nurse partnerships. Eh, just recently, the Finance Committee took part in a roundtable event at Edinburgh University, and this was the major topic we focused on. 
If we as a parliament and we as a country are serious about spending money in the earlier years to save money later on, then family nurse partnerships is exactly the kind of thing we need to be doing. If, as has been clearly said by both speakers so far, a child gets a better start in life, they are not so far behind when they start school, they are less likely to be in trouble eh, as they go through their teenage years, and they are more likely to do well in later life. I think we're all signed up to this concept, and certainly when we as MSPs eh, are in committees and in smaller groups and behaving perhaps more sensibly, I sense we have a lot of agreement on that issue. As I understand it, this FNP programme has very tightly defined rules, eh, albeit with the flexibility that eh, eh, we heard about earlier, and deals with a very specific group of young mothers and has been well analysed, especially in the United States. However, one of the challenges we face is to see if we can move more resources into early years, be that family nurse partnerships or other programmes because that means we need to move resources away from more reactive forms of expenditure. Thus, in the health field, we might think of moving resources away from hospitals and more into community and preventative programmes. That is where it all becomes more difficult to gain consensus, and especially when we are together in this chamber in a combative atmosphere, are we really happy to see some hospitals closed that would free up resources for young families in the community? Are we happy to let A&E waiting times rise in order to let G GPs have more time with their patients? Now, I do thank the Royal College of Nursing for their briefing for today's debate, because they also have raised this tension between where resources should go. They particularly highlight resources, staffing and the professional backup that is required for the FNP programme. And their particular concern is that the wider health visiting service is stretched and is competing for the same resources. I think they have raised a valid question in the final paragraph of their uh, briefing, which says, so that no children fall through the gaps, the RCN believes that the Scottish Government should ensure Scotland has adequate health visitors in addition to FNP nurses. Uh, and I think uh, we would probably agree with that. So we should be putting uh, more emphasis on both the FNP nurses and on health visitors, both of which are very much based in the community. Where are these resources to come from? Uh, presumably uh, by reducing resources for hospitals. In the statement we previously debated in this place, uh, building a more sustainable NHS, uh, in Scotland, health professionals lead the call for action. Uh, again, there was a, a quote uh, in their statement from the RCN, which said, uh, the focus has remained firmly on the traditional model of hospitals as the mainstay of the health service. This needs to change. So, presiding officers, the motion says we congratulate Edinburgh and commend the valuable work undertaken by the Family Nurse Partnerships in Lothian and across Scotland. And I very much hope we can continue building on this example by disinvesting from our more reactive services so that we can mo pre invest more at the preventative end. Thank you. Thanks very much. I now call on Jackson Carlaw, after which we'll move to closing speech from the Minister. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I hope to be commendably brief. I support the motion in Jimmy D's name on uh, family nurse partnerships, but I do so wishing to raise some concerns I have about the consequences that I think arise uh, from the contribution that John Mason made and which I very much share. I support the family nurse partnership because it is focused on the preventative agenda. And I think all the evidence suggests that if we are going to see uh, real savings in our health service so that we're able to cope with the wider challenges that we know it will face with an aging population, we have to start becoming much more successful in the preventative agenda strategy that we have. And he's right, the family nurse partnership, the track record in the United States that Malcolm Chisholm has alluded to and in England has shown dramatic results. Um, but it is very neatly targeted and focused on young mothers under the age of 19. Uh, and it does have a consequence, I believe, for the wider health visiting strategy. Now, Scottish Conservatives expressed concerns really about our approach to health visiting. We have 14 health boards who are each able to determine their own approach to this issue and the resource that they put towards it. We moved away from a nationally GP-attached service uh, to one which works in teams. And the consequence of that was that the skill set that previously existed in individual health services, health visitors being attached to GP practices, 
was slightly diminished by a range of skill sets within the broader teams that were then brought to bear. And some of those skilled health visitors have in fact now applied to be the family nurse uh, partnership specialists, which has further diminished some of the skill sets within uh, the health visiting uh, service. Moreover, the family nurse partnership has uh, over 40% of its um, uh, staff aged 50 or over, and there was a significant age issue arising within national health visiting as well. Now, Scottish Conservatives support family nurse partnerships. We believe that that targeted and focused assistance to that particular group is important. But we also now believe in a universal GP-attached health visiting service, taking children through to the age of seven, because there are a lot of compelling evidence to suggest that trends that develop in young children beyond the age of two, at three and beyond, which lead to obesity, potential future addictions, or even offending rates, can be dealt with with that degree of intervention and support. And we believe in that universal service so that all children have access to it, but we also believe that particular areas of concentration should be in areas where there is high levels of health inequality and deprivation, because that's where it's needed most. And the reality is that there are young mothers who are vulnerable and who are deprived, who are over the age of 19, who are not going to have the benefit of a family health nurse partnership, but who do need the support of a well-resourced health visiting service if we are going to be successful in the much wider spectrum of prevention uh, on uh, young persons' issues. And so, while I fully support the Family Nurse Partnership, which I'd like to see it rolled out further, I think in the whole wider debate we are having, and this is no criticism I hope the Minister accepts, it is part of what we hope is a constructive approach to the shape of the health service going forward. Because I don't necessarily believe it is, as John Mason says, a question of hospitals closing down. The whole point about health prevention strategy is that we can, with a different model of GP facilities and with a successful health prevention strategy, reduce the incidence of people presenting at accident and emergency and potentially the cost burden to the health service, for example, of type 2 diabetes, because we could prevent that with a, a better approach to young people's health and avoiding issues of obesity. So I hope the Minister accepts in the spirit in which I say that I am concerned that we need in the next Parliament as we look to how this new model of health care develops to ensure that family nurse health partnerships, which I believe are successful, are in conjunction with a wider availability of service to a much wider target group of people uh, universally and particularly where vulnerabilities and health inequalities exist. Many thanks. And we now move to closing speech from the Minister Maureen Watt. Minister, seven minutes or thereby, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer, and I'm delighted to be asked to congratulate NHS Lothian on becoming the first city in the world to offer the Family Nurse Partnership Programme to all eligible women in its fifth anniversary year. I also welcome the contributions that have been made by members during the debate, and I'd like to thank Jim Eady for tabling the motion. NHS Lothian was the first board in Scotland to deliver the programme in 2010. They have been clear in their commitment to the programme from the outset. Evidence from the evaluation carried out over three years demonstrated that the programme could be implemented with fidelity to the original research model. NHS Lothian has worked closely with the Scottish Government using a co-production model to ensure that the learning is embedded in wider policy rather than just this programme. And I think the lessons that are in the Family Nurse Partnership and can be learned from them are being used in the wider um, health um, visiting community. This has included sharing with other universal services, as I say, including the maternity service and health visiting. And I would like to commend them for their continuing commitment to the programme. And this has been demonstrated further by expanding to other parts of NHS Lothian, including West, East and Mid Lothian, who will also have the opportunity to benefit from the programme. Uh, and the other health boards um, that Jim Eady mentioned, uh, including, uh, it's already started up in Grampian and Borders uh, later this year, so it'll be 10, including the Borders. Uh, this is the first time that a licensed evidence-based programme has been implemented at scale by the Scottish Government. 
Further expansion of the programme has to be agreed with the licence provider, Professor Olds, to ensure that the quality of the implementation is maintained. The success of the programme so far has been demonstrated through the recruitment and, more importantly, the retention of clients, as well as the dedication of the nursing teams who support them. NHS Lothian has an average uptake of 81%, with only 96 leaving the programme before their child reaches the age of two. This is well within the fidelity targets set within the licence and has been maintained throughout the implementation. This achievement was recognised recently at an event hosted by the First Minister at Edinburgh Castle to celebrate with NHS Lothian and to bring a message of continuing support from Professor Olds. I was delighted to have the opportunity to attend that event and was really struck by the family part of it. It wasn't just mothers and their children, it was uh, partners, boyfriends, husbands as well, who were really enthusiastic and well involved in the upbringing uh, of their children and the relationship with their, their nurse partnership was really strong and I was quite struck by that. So their experience and learning, as I said, has been used to inform not only how the programme can be rolled out across Scotland, but how other health services um, can use it. And indeed, it was the First Minister in her then role as Cabinet Secretary for Health who, uh, on her visit to a clinic in Harlem, New York, in April 20, uh, 2009, first recognised the strength of the evidence-based base of this programme and how it could contribute towards giving all our children the best start in li life. The programme supports first-time young mothers from early pregnancy until the child reaches two and aims to improve maternal, maternal and birth outcomes, child health and development and the economic self-sufficiency of the family. And we also note that there are reductions in children's injuries, neglect and abuse and a reduction in their arrest and criminal behaviour um, of both perhaps other children uh, and mothers. So there is a more, a, a wider um, investment here that is showing dividends. The Scottish Government has invested 15.5 million in the programme since 2010, and this investment has allowed dedicating nursing teams to be put in place across nine health boards. Um, the family nurse partnership teams are, and I stress this again, in addition to the existing community nursing workforce that supports families who don't receive the family nurse um, partnership programme. So we're not taking away from existing services. This investment has also supported, also supported the infrastructure within NHS boards to allow the programme to be supported within the local con uh, contexts. There's an emphasis placed on data collection at each visit, and this is used to inform continuous quality improvement at each level of, a, of the programme, be that either nurse client team or the NHS board. The subgroup of the population served by the Family Nurse Partnership programme was recognised as a vulnerable group within the NICE guidance on pregnancy and complex social factors published in 2010. It recognised that young women under 20 should be supported through the provision of tailored advice and support that recognises their specific needs. The Family Nurse Partnership Programme goes even further than that and also recognises the strengths within this population. I think others have already mentioned that and where there are opportunities to work with them to help them make good choices for them and their children. But the vulnerabilities of this group can't be underestimated According to the most recent ISD teenage pregnancy report published in June 2014, we know that those from the most deprived are 4.6 times more likely to have a teenage pregnancy. It also states that in the under 20s group from the most deprived areas, the rates of those going on to have their babies is almost 12 times greater than the least deprived. We also know that poor health behaviours like smoking are highest in this group. The strength of this programme is that it has generated transformational change in the partner organisations out with the NHS, particularly housing, to help them recognise how to realign their services to meet the particular needs of young mothers and their families. This insightful learning was first gathered by NHS Lothian and has provided a much greater understanding by all the services 
of what it takes to support this population group well. NHS Lothian have provided guidance and support to the other NHS boards uh, to help inform them of how to work in an integrated way with all these other service providers who may not immediately recognise the importance of their role. So in closing, presiding officer, I would like to recognise the achievements of both nurses and families from NHS Lothian to successfully implement a complex social intervention such as is the Family Nurse Partnership Programme. Thank you. Many thanks and thank you all for taking part in this important debate. I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30. <laughs>